Welcome back. That's David, that's Wesley, and this is The Trailcast, a weekly podcast by Down the Rabbit Trail. You can find us on Apple, Spotify, Google, or wherever you get your podcast. I think Robert should be one of those uh, promo guys. Yeah, uh, I, I'd say that's an intro. Anyway, uh, why don't we just go ahead and jump right into this. So, uh, what are we doing today, Wesley? I don't know. I feel a little off because that sounded great, but it's just not it's not the normal vibe. I, I, I don't know what my line is anymore. Uh, anyway, what, 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 uh, what are we doing today? Uh, quiz. We're doing a quiz. Trivia. Yeah, it's 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 it's, uh, it's not the right week for it. But next week, Bad Batch is coming out. So that's what we're going to be talking about. So this week we're doing quiz uh, stuff. So hopefully, hopefully I can take da- David down once again. Last time it was a technicality. So this time I have to do it uh, very, very convincingly, which will probably not happen. So convincingly, I I have to beat you convincingly, is what I was getting at. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah. Yeah. And today to ask the questions to us is Robert. That's right. Today we will be returning to Star Wars trivia. Did you get Robert as an AI? I'm 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 not used to this amount of professionalism, but okay. <laughs> I know it's weird. It's weird, but uh All right. Why don't we just go ahead and jump right into it? Why don't we just go ahead and jump right into it? All right. All right. Question one. What much reviled Star Wars character is a Twi'lek who served for decades as the chief of staff to Jabba the Hutt? How do you spell that? I'm so I want to give I want to give each of you all the opportunity to uh, explain your answer. So are you both ready? Okay. Yes. Uh, I, yeah. I uh, have an answer. All right, David, go ahead. Uh, Bib Fortuna. I know it's backwards. Put, yeah, thing. put that as well. I just uh, Wesley wrote bit, out. bit for tuna. Yes, yes, I did. I didn't know how it was spelled. So I don't know how we're doing this. Like David spelled it correctly. Uh, Wesley knew what the character was though. I don't know how to spell it. All right. Yeah, uh, I mean, give each of you a point for that. Okay. Go ahead and write. I was very lost though at first when you when you said the question. I was very confused. Took me a minute. What did you not remember he was a Twi'lek? No, I didn't. I was sitting there. I was like, second in command. What? And I was like thinking of uh, for every reason. I think it was like the slave girl from episode six. And I was like, that's not right. And uh, then I was like, oh wait, him. So uh, uh, I think it was actually retconned that Bib Fortuna was a Twi'lek. Hmm. Is that his uh, mantras aren't the same as like we see other Twi'leks, so. Yeah, that's why it's a little little off. But. Yeah. All right, All this right. next one, spelling matters. Dang it. Uh-oh. <laughs> what is the name of the tree-covered planet the Wookiees call home? Spelling matters. Yeah, I, know it's, it's, I know it's a weird spelling, it. so. Should I just forfeit? Mm-hmm. Hold up. I spot. I am nowhere close to getting this thing. I know, I know I've got one part of it right that is really weird about the spelling, but I don't know if the rest of the spelling's right. <laughs> Do you have an answer? I do, yes. Once I can figure out a semi-close spelling of it. No, I don't know. Yeah, I, this isn't spelled right. Whatever. Alright, reveal your answers. Is chic. I don't know how this thing is spelled. Chic. 
It's got a triple Y. So, spelling didn't really matter. I just wanted to see who could get closer. Mm -hmm. Uh, David got it right besides he wrote a 2 instead of an A. That is an A. I I knew there was multiple Ys. I just can't remember where it was at. No, but it's got a triple Y. (laughs) Yeah, the correct answer is Kashyyyk. You are both correct. So wait, Question three. How, how's, how's that spelled? It is spelled K-A-S-H-Y-Y-Y-K. Okay. Well, I'll keep that log somewhere. All right. Question three. What is the name of the large omnivorous cephalopods from the planet Vodron having seven sucker tentacles, an eye stalk, a mouth of sharp teeth, and several hearts? Do we have multiple choice for these? No. We don't have multiple choice? Oof. Oh, no. Um, could you repeat the question? Uh, yeah. The whole thing? Re- repeat the description. Uh, let's see. Uh, the name of the large omnivorous cephalopods from the planet Vodron having seven suckered tentacles an eye stalk, a mouth of sharp teeth, and several hearts. Now, how about this, David? Since there aren't multiple choice, if Robert knows, can we ask him, like, an instance of, like, where we might have seen him? Like, okay, we saw him in the Clone Wars, or we saw them in this episode, or something like that. To narrow it down. Well, I, was, I, 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 I wouldn't you, say... Okay. Uh... I will give you, got, you each a point if you can tell me exactly what this is from. Okay. Uh, that doesn't help anything, but... Mm. Uh, to my knowledge, this has only appeared in one instance in Star Wars canon. Okay. Um, I just write this down, even though I know it's wrong. Uh, is that, are we are we going right now with the the name of the species, or are we going with the time it was used? Like a description of it. What are you doing, David? I was just thinking the name of the species because that's that's what the question was. Okay. Okay. Um. Yeah, I need the name of the species, but I can tell if you need a hint, I can tell you what it's from. You want that, Wesley? I would like something, yes. But if it's what I'm thinking it is, then it won't help. Yeah, it's the trash compactor monster from episode four of New Hope. Okay. No, that was something. Mm -hmm. Right, right there. The the description doesn't really help for you know identifying that creature because all you see of it is the eye stock. <laughs> yeah. And, well, the tentacles. Well, you know, technically, but <clears throat> oh gosh, what do you? I'm trying to think. I know I've heard this before. Yeah. But I don't know what it is. All right, guys, I'm going to need an answer. Uh, I'm just going to write something down, even though it's wrong. Yeah. Just because I cannot think of something, so I'm just going to write this down. All right, ready, David? All right, reveal your answers. I'm going to name him Tim. I just called him Trash Monster. <laughs> the correct answer is Dianoga. Dianoga. Uh... Like I said, I know I've heard that before, but... Yeah, some of these are kind of obscure, and some are very easy. 
Yeah, uh, really, really well rounded. Yeah. You can't get them all right. No. <laughs> but we need to not get the same ones right and wrong. Yep. Question number four. Though she gave it to Obi-Wan shortly before she died, Padme was buried with a good luck charm that had been made by Anakin. It was made from Japur ivory wood, a type of wood from what planet? Mm. What was that made from? Or what? Where, where did that come? It was made of ivory wood, and I just need to—I just need the name of the planet that it is from. Do you have an answer, Wesley? Um, I have a thought. It's wrong, but I'm trying to remember the movie. I have an answer. Don't know if it's right. But... All right. Do you both have an answer? Mm, yeah. There's a spelling in there. I don't know. So All right. Go it. ahead and reveal your answers. So I don't know why I put Diego. I don't know what I don't know. I put Naboo. That's a B, but. <laughs> I just, I was thinking, uh, go ahead and reveal the answer. The correct answer is Tatooine. Tatooine. See, See, I wasn't thinking. I thought that was too easy. Also, in my head, head, I was trying to think of, like, the space pilot he was talking about. And for whatever, whatever reason, Dagobah kept coming to mind. I was like, well, that's not right. So I went to something that was close. See, they I have trees on <clears throat> Tatooine. Well, there was that line of thought, and then I also thought that was too easy of a quick answer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's the obvious one. Some, sometimes, yeah. yes. yes. Uh, All right. Question five. The language spoken by the Ewoks is a combination of two real-life languages. Can you tell me one of the two real-life languages? If you need a hint, I can tell you a continent. Why not? I was say. Asia. Yeah. Okay, I'll go with my first line of thought then. Um, Not a linguist. This is bad. It doesn't matter. All right. All right. Do you have your answers? Yes. All right. Reveal your answers. I couldn't think of anything. I put Mandarin. I put Japanese. The correct answers are Tibetan and Nepalese. I got halfway through trying to spell Mandarin, and I was just like, yeah, it doesn't really matter. Well, you were closer, but you were still off. Yeah. You were closer geographically, but you were still off. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't matter. Did you need that it hint was... to get the right part of the world? Well, oh, I was just, I was just Jap- guess. Japanese yeah. was the Japanese was my first thought. I but... was just going to save American. <laughs> Well, I didn't know what it was. I guess that. Well, actually, that, that that was my first. My first two thoughts were Japanese and Cherokee, but I was thinking some South African tribe or something like that. But I don't know the names. 
Oh, well, Mm -hmm. we're doing great, David. (laughs) All right. Question six. Orabesh is the writing language used to represent what spoken word language in the Star Wars films? Can you repeat the uh, language? I think might have cut out. Orabesh. Orabesh? Orabesh is the writing system used to represent what spoken word language in the Star Wars films. Okay. Do you have an answer? I got something. All right, reveal your answers. I just put Wookiee. I, I put Galactic Basic. The correct answer is Galactic Basic. Galactic Basic. Should have gone with the simple one. All right, David, you finally got one right. Oh, not that you hadn't got one right, but we're finally not the same. I, I feel like that question was kind of targeted at me, though. <laughs> All right, question seven. What two word name is given to the cantina on Tatooine where Luke Skywalker and Obi Wan Kenobi first encounter Han Solo? I'm looking for blank, blank cantina. Is it? That's not spelled right, but we'll go with it. As long as spelling doesn't matter. All right, are you ready? Uh, I guess. All right, reveal your answers. Moss Eisley Cantina. The correct answer is Moss Eisley Cantina. All right, now I can get a little confidence back. I know something. Even if it is just a really simple. Yeah. Yeah. The simple one's been biting me so far, so. Question number eight. Fill in the missing loca- location from this Darth Sidious quote. Quote, when you arrive on blank, you will find the place where the dark side calls to you. Draw upon the energy there, combine its power with your own, then use it. I have a feeling this is from the Darth Vader comics, and I haven't read those. The answer I'm looking for is when you arrive on blank. I've got an answer. Yeah, I got an answer. All right, reveal your answers. Exegol. The correct answer is Mustafar. Okay. I knew that was where he decided to make his base, but other than that, that was the only guess that I had. Yeah, I don't. I should have think... gone. I should have gone. My gut, because that's that's the first thing I thought of. But yeah, I don't I think that's it. from Revenge of the Sith. That has to be from the Vader comic or or another. Yeah, book. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. All right. Question number nine: Which Star Wars villain was originally played by Declan Mulholland in A New Hope before the scene was? 
the scene was cut and the character completely reimagined. I'll repeat that. Which Star Wars villain was originally played by Declan Mulholland in A New Hope before the scene was cut and the character completely reimagined? Okay, I have an answer. Yeah. All right, reveal your answers. Job of the Hut. Ah. Uh, the yeah. correct answer is Job of the Hut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, uh, good one, David. But they were both in that scene. Actually, I don't know. Was yeah. Boba Fett in the original version, uh, or was it just the the version added later? I don't I know if he was in the original, original version or the specialized edition. So. Well, he was he was in the later one. He was in the, the when they added it back in, but I don't know if. Uh, I feel like I, I remember seeing him original. in the background, but I could be misremembering it. But um, yeah, yeah. Good job remembering All that, right. David. All right. Question number ten: Which <laughs> popular Star Wars side character? made his first appearance in an animated segment during the Star Wars Holiday Special, saving Luke Skywalker and others from a giant monster. Mm -hmm. You ready, Wesley? Yep. I have been ready. All right. All right, reveal your answers. Okay. Boba well, Fett. The correct, right. answer, the correct answer is Boba Fett. Did you even have to erase that, Wesley? I did not. <laughs> I just kind of... <laughs> Yep. All right. Question number 11. In Rogue One, the Empire loots blank city to acquire kyber crystals for powering the Death Star. I believe it is also the name of the planet. I have an answer. Don't know if it's right, but I have an answer. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to get one then. Um, David, since we got dead air right now, I can hear mom and dad in the background. Mm -hmm. Every once in a while, I can hear some stuff come up. Uh, yeah, uh -huh. I don't have a, I don't have an answer. I'm going to answer soon. We're good to go. All right. Reveal your answers. I don't have an answer. That's supposed to be Naboo. Uh, Jetta. I couldn't remember yeah. if it was two T's or two uh, D's. Yeah. So the correct answer is Jetta, but it is spelled J E D H A. So oh. both spellings of yours were incorrect. Oh, okay. Well, don't worry, David. You still got the answer right. But I'm gonna give it to you anyway because you, yeah, you knew it. Yeah. Well, what's that's your favorite Star Wars movie? I know. I I was racking my brain to remember like when they talked about getting like they you know needed to go there or whatever, and I just could 
can remember anything like some tea related names were coming to mind. So I was I wasn't even close with my my thought process with it. That was the planet they went to to where uh, you know, they found Sarbera well, and stuff. I, I can see the so that's scene. What I was, that's I what I was about scene. to ask. Is, is is that the planet that they blew up test or they blew up the city testing the Death Star? Yes. Yep. Okay. I can see the scene. I know exactly what everything everything about that scene. I just couldn't remember the name. Ah, oh well, that's all that matters. Okay. Question twelve. <laughs> Killed by Tusken Raiders on her home planet of Tatooine during Attack of the Clones, what was the first name of Anakin's mother? You have a name, Wesley? Yep. All right. All right. Go ahead and reveal your answers. I don't know. How to spell it. I got Shmi. me. Oh, it's, it's an I. I don't know. So the correct answer is Shmi, and David spelled it correctly. Okay. Okay. Question thirteen. Who was the senator from Naboo when Amidala was queen during Star Wars Episode One? First and last name. First and last name. I don't even have a first name. So this is presumably the senator previous to Amidala. So during episode two, Attack of the Clones, she is the senator. But while she was queen during episode one, who was the senator from Naboo? All right. Do you have an yep. answer? All right. Yeah. Reveal your answers. I just put Sheev Palpatine. The yeah. correct answer is Sheev Palpatine. I thought I was overthinking it. So. At first, I was thinking the older guy, um, like one of the advisors that she has. Uh. I was like, what were their names? And I was like, oh, never mind. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to help you because I could tell you were struggling. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> Question 14. The planet Alderaan is well known to Star Wars fans for being the home of Bail Organa and what adopted daughter of his? who would rise above her royal ranks to become, in essence, the leader of the Rebel Alliance. Yeah, some of these are just way too hard. First and last name. All right, All right are yeah. you are you ready? All right, reveal your answers. Leia Organa, Princess Leia Organa. Oh, that no is way. correct. The correct answer is Leia Organa. <clears throat> All right. Question fifteen: What is the name of the horned? clawed white furred species of this of snow monster found on the icy planet that was home to the rebel alliance's temporary echo base 
in episode five, The Empire Strikes Back. All right, you ready, Wilson? All right, reveal your answers. It's a wampa. That's wampa. right. The correct answer is wampas. I almost had the biggest brain lapse. Like, it was about to be real bad. All right, we are halfway through the game of trivia. And our score update, Wesley has nine points, and David has 11. Seems about right. I'm just surprised I've got nine. All right. Question number 16. What character is responsible for the death of Jabba the Hutt in Episode 6, Return of the Jedi? All right. Are you ready, David? I am, yes. All right. Reveal your answers. Princess Leia Organa. That is correct. I wasn't sure if you were going to want first and last time on that one as well. So (laughs) So it was only written on the previous answer that was Leia. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, number 17, Rey, the scavenger turned Jedi in the Star Wars sequel trilogy, is first shown on what planet? All right, reveal your answers. Jakku. What does yours say, Wesley? It's supposed to say Jakku. I don't have a K. That's a U, but then I retraced it. Poorly. So yours just says, oh, yours just says 1K? Yeah, yeah the correct is answer is Jakku. Question 18. In the Star Wars universe, most residents of the planet Shili, including Je- Jedi Master Shock T and Padawan Ahsoka Tano, are members of what species? President, I actually knew that that was their homeworld. You ready, Wesley? Mm-hmm. All right, reveal your answers. The Gruda. Twilight. Nope, no mind. But Twilight. So it is Toe Gruda, yes. Okay. What did you say, Wesley? Twilight? Twilight. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Uh, question 19. At the end of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, Rey pulls out and activates her own lightsaber for the first time. What color blade does it have? Spoilers, we haven't talked about that one yet. I know, exactly. These aren't my questions. <laughs> you can tell by the way they're phrased. <laughs> I got an answer. We're good. All right. Reveal your answers. Yellow. Uh, That is correct. Yellow. All right. Question 20. In the final episode of the first season of The Mandalorian, a famous weapon is revealed. We, uh, when briefly seen in the hands of Moff Gideon, what is this weapon? All right, Wesley. You ready? 
All right, reveal your answers. Dark saber. Uh, that is correct. The dark saber. All right. Question 21. What power source was used to power the Death Star's super laser? I feel like you should have put this one before one of the ones we've already had. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. I am, I'm just reading them in the order Sarah sent them. All right. I think we're ready to spell that. There. Yeah. Yeah, we're good. All right. Reveal your answers. Kyber, Kyber crystals. That is correct. Kyber crystals. I feel like we're moving through these a lot faster than we did last time. Because you guys are being very uh, quiet and giving no commentary while you're answering. I Yeah, I don't know. It's not a commentary episode, I guess. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, David, David, doesn't like... David doesn't talk much as it is, and I don't really have much to say. So. Yeah, because you're losing. You guys, you guys are just yeah. trying really hard to win. Well, <laughs> I, I, I'm past that point right now. So right now, I'm just trying to get as many as I can. Right. <laughs> All right. Twenty-two. The climactic battle at the end of Star Wars. A New Hope, uh, with the Rebels attempting to destroy the Death Star, takes place in orbit of the planet blank, also the location of the Rebel base. Okay. I had to leave details out of that question to make it not so easy. I think I understand the question. I have something I want to say on this one too. If uh, after we reveal our answers, because the way it's phrased is well, I'll let you re read the full way it's phrased. You mean to do that first? But no, uh, we can do. Unless right. Wesley wants you to, but I'm fine with whatever. All right, reveal your answers. Yavin uh, and Yavin four. four. Yeah. So the the answer it gives me is Yavin four. Which is not a planet. I know that's where you're going. Yeah, yeah. So I was about to say, yeah. the The planet is Yavin. The rebel base is on Yavin Four, which is one of the moons of Yavin. Mm -hmm. So the uh, the full question was the climactic battle at the end of Star Wars 1977, with the rebels attempting to destroy the Death Star, takes place in or uh, takes place in orbit. Of the planet Blank Four, also the location of the Rebel base. Its name is found near the end of our alphabet. What words fill in the blank? Yes, that's way too easy. But again, like I said, Yavin Four is not a planet. <laughs> it's a moon. I didn't fact check these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. No idea where she got them from. So. All right. Question number twenty-three. Uh, what sinister Doug and pod racing champion was bested by a young Anakin Skywalker in episode one, The Phantom Menace? Oh, crap. Oh, yeah. Sam David. For some reason, I was just drawing a blank on his name, and then it just suddenly I, I had, came to me. I had a little crap moment, too. Yeah. All right. Do you both have an answer? Yeah. All right. R reveal your answers. So Boba. So, uh, yeah, the, the correct answer is Saboba. There was a hesitation there. What was that for? Uh, the spelling. Oh. <laughs> You're both way off, yeah. but it's uh, S-E-B-U-L-B-A. Yeah. Dude, the thing is, is... Uh, uh... 
we had a question with that. I've been doing the questions this past week for the, the, the shorts. And I had to look up the spelling of Boba, but I still I just put what sounded what it sounds like. Well, other. also in the movie, like in the movie, they don't really pronounce it Saboba. They pronounce like they most of the time they say it a lot quicker, so it just sounds like Saboba without the L. <laughs> yeah, but I remember looking at it, and I was like, that doesn't sound like what what it's. Uh, but I guess thinking like. back on it, there, I guess thinking back on it, like there is an L, but I just don't. They say it so fast you don't hear it. Yeah. All right. This this next one's really hard. All right. Number twenty four. What is Emperor Palpatine's first name? It's not Emperor. No, it's Chancellor. In the original trilogy. <laughs> as long as spelling's not a. All right, are you ready? Sure. All right, reveal your answers. Chief. Uh, that is correct. Not you both spelled, spelled it the same way and both spelled it wrong. Well, that's how we spelled it last time. Uh, we could be both spelled it the same way. Yeah. How was it actually spelled then? Yeah. Uh, S H E E V. Oh, there's no E at the end. Yeah, well, we weren't that far off. Hmm. Kind of close. But again, okay. there's, there's almost no telling with some of these words how they're actually spelled. Like, if I hadn't seen Kashyyyk spelled out before, I, I would not have known it had three Ys back to back to back. It, it starts with a K. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. I presume. 25. In Star Wars The Phantom Menace, what is the name of the Zito Podracer, who finishes second to Anakin Skywalker in the Bunta Eve Classic Pod Race. That's not right. Whatever. I'm going to keep it. I don't think it's right, but I'm going to keep it. All right. You both have an answer? The spelling's a butcher, but I can tell you what it's supposed to say. Reveal your answers. Is it? Wes, I got it right. Yeah. I put Sebulba, but I I remember. After I wrote it down, I remember he he didn't finish. Uh, Wesley, Wesley, what did you write? I put Quagenero, or whatever his name is. Uh, so the correct um, answer is Gasgano. Yeah, that was what I said, David. I, I didn't think it, but this guy, this guy was way too far. Or if I'm, if I put the right guy's name, whoever the oh, uh, is that a, guy who's called is that Humpty, out, is that Humpty Dumpty. Yeah, Humpty Dumpty. He he was way too far yeah. behind, but that was the only name I could think of, and I wasn't gonna put Saboba. So, well, I just I, put I that had... on there just because I, I thought of it, and I'm like, no, that's not right because he got he never finished the race. But you know, whatever. Yeah. What what now? What was the answer? I know you said it, but I forgot it. Gasgano. Gasgano. Okay. Well, the more you know. All right, we have five questions left, and I'm going to give you a score update. So Wesley has 17 points, and David has 20 out of 25. Yeah, pretty good, David. Yeah. Again, I'm surprised I got to 17. I feel like I've missed way more than questions asked. I said that how I said it. Um. <laughs> now, I know what I said. Okay. I'm on a roll of wrong answers, I feel like. But... Now, I watched your last trivia, but I don't. I can't remember who won. Because didn't it go Honestly, to a tiebreaker? On a technicality, I won. We we basically tied, but on a technicality, I won. Okay. Well, what what even was the tiebreaker we did? The midichlorian count of Anakin, and I was just oh, oh right, because because you put like a billion right. and I in the thousands. <laughs> yeah. 
basically. Mm. Yeah, it was a technicality. Yeah, I, I came. I have a tiebreaker for this one if we need it. No. <laughs> I've already reserved myself. I'm, I'm not winning this one. All right. You gotta believe in yourself. I'm gonna guess, but that's about what I'm doing. All right, question 26. What is the name of the carnivorous creature from Tatooine that C-3PO is talking about when he says, in its belly you will find a new definition of pain and suffering as you sh- as you slowly digest for over a thousand years? I think that's like that. I got an answer. I'm not spelling it right, so you don't have to feel like you need to. All right, reveal your answers. Sarlacc. Sarlacc. That is correct, the Sarlacc pit. I can't remember. Is Sarlacc one word or two? Uh, It is one word. It is spelled S A R L A C C. Okay. For some oh, reason I was thinking it's Sarlacc, hard. but whatever. Whatever. Okay. Number 27. The planet of Tatooine is part of a binary star system. Its two suns share what name, being distinguished only by Roman numerals following this name? Oh, crap. So what I'm looking for is blank one and blank two. Wasn't there a scene in The Phantom Menace where Anakin was telling Padme about this? I feel like that's... I feel like I'm remembering something about that. I don't remember what it is. (laughs) <laughs> it's wrong, but I'm just gonna go. So do we have to one. do we have to put it as one and two, and two in our answering? Yes. Oh. Uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I have no idea. I have an answer, David, whenever you're ready. I do, too. It's wrong, but I have an answer. All right. Reveal your answers. I I just put (laughs) Sun 1 and Sun 2. I put Boonta for the Boonta Eve thing. Oh, yeah. So Tatooine's twin sons are called Tattoo 1 and Tattoo 2. (laughs) You know, I honestly was thinking about putting Tattoo. Well, I was going to put Tatooine. But, um, dang. Yeah, that, that's another one I can tell George Lucas came up with. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Yeah, that's definitely a very George Lucas name for a, the sons of a yeah. planet called Tatooine. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Uh, we're on a roll, Dave. Well, actually, you are on a roll. Uh, but. Oh, wow. All right. All right. Uh, number 28. In Return of the Jedi, Ula is the dancer sent off to be killed by the Rancor, owned by what crime lord? You know, honestly, when you said some of these are going to be like really easy. And some of these are going to be really hard. Every time you start your question, I'm always thinking, all right, let me, let me, where's the twist? There's going to be something in here that's going to be like so close to something that I know, but I'm just not going to have it. And then sometimes you just stop the question. (laughs) Still waiting for the twist. Yeah. Uh, You have an answer, Wesley? 
I do. All right, what's your answer? All right, reveal your answers. Jabba, Jabba the Hutt. That is correct. Jabba's... The cor- Jabba the Hutt. David has Jabba's the Hutt. Now, I did have to rephrase this question. I'm going to read the original. Uh, in Return of the Jedi, Ula is the dancer sent off to be killed by the Rancor, owned by what fat, slimy J. Hutt? <laughs> Oh wow! I don't know where she got Perfect. these questions from. All right, we got two left. All right, All number right, twenty nine. I'm gonna get uh probably like five points and two questions. <laughs> five right, points and two questions. I don't know. Probably need more. All Continue, right. Robert. So I don't at this point. Uh, Wesley has 19 points, and David has 22. So it's not possible for yeah a tie. Dang. One one short <laughs> from uh from being able to at least tie. Oh well, I'm gonna try and get to 20. <laughs> All right. Uh, number 29, an ancient Sith who opposed the continuation of the old Sith ways, was portrayed by Mark Hamill in the Clone Wars. Uh, this was Darth Blank. Hmm. So I'm going to rephrase this question. Darth Blank was an ancient Sith who opposed the continuation of the old Sith ways and was portrayed by Mark Hamill in The Clone Wars. Thank you, hard, David. I don't remember this, but I'm just going off of the uh, context. All right. Do you have an answer? I have an answer. All right. Reveal your answers. Darth Darth Bane. Bane. The correct answer is Darth Bane. And in the uh, Clone Wars, when Yoda goes and meets uh, the ghost of Darth Bane or whatever, that was working. Oh, see, I forgot about that. I forgot about. I, I, but I, I, when I'm listening to that and the, watching it, was that but, the episode Ghosts of Mortis? I, it might have been. I don't remember the names of them, but I know it's when yeah, Yoda I, on that journey and he's like trying to learn and, and find Qui Gon and like learn the Force Ghost stuff. It's it's when he's doing that that he comes in contact with. Okay. Him. See, I was I was just going off the fact oh, that, like the that's ancient, season ancient, seven, isn't it? Season six. Season no, six. Season six. It's, yeah, it's, it's an earlier. It's, season. The, it's the Netflix season. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, I, I was just going. I... Go ahead. I was just going off the fact that it was a um ancient Sith who, uh, opposed the oh, like, the ways yeah. to, you know whatever, because you know Darth yeah, Bane stopped heard... the rule too. I had heard after like later after the fact that apparently Mark Hamill had voiced it. Um, but yeah, the, the original question was pretty easy to guess with the the way they phrased it. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like so I had completely forgotten about that. Uh, I remember that arc, but I completely forgot about that scene. That uh, you know, part. Yeah. yeah. All right. Final question: The only non-Jedi to wield a lightsaber in the original Star Wars trilogy was Han Solo. When he cut open what? I think it's just like that, right? I don't know. I know what it's supposed to say. Yeah, I do too. You ready? Yeah. All right, reveal your answers. Tauntaun. Uh, Tauntaun. The correct answer is Tauntaun. I did break 20, so I'm pretty happy with that. All right. The final score, Wesley got 21 of 30, and David got 24 of 30. Not bad. That's, that, for, for how many I felt like we were missing at the beginning there, 
the fact that we got into the twenties is pretty good. See, but we missed like four right off the bat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It it seems like a lot more though. Like, but then then Robert was like, question fifteen, and I was like, when did we get to fifteen? So I, I'm I'm all out of it for most of this. You know what for? You know what for? Oh. Uh, awareness. Just, yeah. just just for the sake of it, and just to you know stretch stretch this out a little bit longer. What was your uh? Tiebreaker question, Rob. All right. Oh, yeah. If we do that, we whoever wins it wins the whole thing. All right. Well, David's probably going to get it right, so it's okay. <laughs> All right. I want to hear it. This is, this is a numerical question because that's the most fair way to do a tiebreaker. The same way you did it before with the midichlorians. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, and I'll let you use a calculator, but don't look it up. Okay, tell me in minutes the length of all three Star Wars prequel movies on Disney Plus. All three of the prequels. Oh gosh. Okay. In oh. in minutes. Um. All right. Um, I have a number. Uh, let's say I have one, two. All right. All right. In minutes, what is the entire runtime of the prequel trilogy on Disney Plus? We have four thirty. Four hundred minutes. The correct answer is four hundred and twenty-one minutes. Uh. Making Wesley the winner. Um, mm. huh, I beat you on the technicalities. <laughs> so, what I did, we talked about this, David, last week <clears throat> with the movie. I mentioned it being an hour and a half. Well, I knew already that the other two, two were hours. around around an hour and a half, but I, I factored in that they were closer to an hour and 20 minutes because I knew the last Jedi was the longest. <clears throat> so I just took two, two, and, two, two and a half hour, or two, two, and tw- uh, two hour and 20 minute movies and then a two and a half hour movie, and that was where I came to my conclusion. But 400 mm-hmm. was pretty close, so. Well, I did two, two, and two and a half, and then... Uh, that came out with 390, which I figured, which I thought was too low, so I rounded up to 400. Uh, let's see, off the top of my yeah. head, off the top of my head, I think it was Phantom Menace is two hours seventeen. Uh, Attack of the Clones is the longest of the three. I think it's two twenty three, two hours twenty three, and Revenge of the Sith is two hours twenty one. Wow. Oh well, David. You know, I'm, more. Still gonna, I'm still going to claim victory on that one, but I was going to say, I was going to say, uh, you know, Robert, but we have a, we it. have a contested title in this, in this tournament. Yeah. But, uh, you, you, you know, more of the, uh, the, the trivia question. I can just beat you on those technicalities. <laughs> that's, that's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Yeah. So two, two trivia, uh, two trivia episodes in a row. Wesley wins on a technicality. Yep. <laughs> Hey, that's that's the best kind. That's the only way I'm ever gonna win. <clears throat> I, I will say, uh, David, I, I feel like we're for most not most of the general trivia when it comes to Star Wars, we're pretty well on par. But when it goes to digging deep, most of the time, I feel like you're probably gonna be able to dig, dig a little deeper and remember something that I won't. So maybe it depends. Well, I don't know, last time. 
I know last time we tied, but there were some questions that I got wrong that you got right, and there's some that you got wrong that I got right. But I don't we think also got the effect. There's also were there many effect, this time. Uh, there was a couple I think that we went back and forth on, but I also got to think about the fact that like there were a couple that I feel like I definitely overthought, and uh, I bit on. I should have known um, uh, Jetta. Definitely should have known that one. But uh, you know, what it, it's it's all it all it all comes down to who remembers it in the moment. So mm. the pressure is just too much for me, apparently. Yeah, I'll, I'll get more comfortable doing this uh, down the also line. Should it'll, just, it'll take a while. I also should have just gone with the uh, somewhat obvious one with the Tatooine with them in the necklace. Yeah, yeah, you and I both should have done that. Honestly, yes, we definitely. <laughs> There were all uh, also no multiple choice this time. That made it harder. Yeah, there there yeah. were the four that we missed in a row would have been a lot easier if we had multiple choice. Mm. So, I also feel like I should have remembered the uh the trash compactor monster. Yeah, yeah, that one I was uh, I was what what, what is hold up. I forgot what it is now. What is it called? They start with a D, I know that. Or does it? Uh, think so, right? Dianoga. Dianoga. Yeah. Like I said, I feel like I should. I feel like I should know that. Yeah. Well, you know, David, when we were doing the um, because you mentioned this last time we did trivia, when we were doing the Trailcast trivia for like the movies or whatever, and you were asking me questions, when I when we did those, I had time to prepare, so. Like, honestly, I probably should have gotten more right than I than I even did because I had time to prepare, not knowing what you were going to ask, but I had time to prepare for like a specific movie. For mm-hmm. this, it really just comes down to what we remember from Star Wars, which is a very vast area. And for the questions that Robert just asked that Sarah found somewhere online on some website and for the questions that are in the book that we, we were going to be using, uh, those are not strictly disney canon anymore that's just anything canonized or anything star wars related there's like a lot Mm. that you and i have to remember dig deep to and like so you know that it can be hard it can be easy but hopefully it's at least we, we didn't talk much this time but hopefully it was at least a little entertaining so yeah Uh, I guess we can just go ahead and jump into what's new with you. Well, I was about to say next time I can I can try and find some questions as a better balance of because I feel like this time it was either they were either really hard or very easy. Yeah. Now that be, I guess we can talk about this after the fact, but uh, I was going to ask if you, Rob, as uh, if you were doing this, do you want to find your own questions or like this week we had to find some online. But I do have a book of trivia questions that we were originally. That's what we used last time. Through. Yeah. Uh, I can look up my own if I have a uh, more advanced notice. David told me yesterday that I was going to be doing this. Okay. All right. Well, works for me. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, David, go ahead and take us over to what's new with you. All right. Where's the button for this? Hold up. What's new? 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 Yeah. So Wesley. Never mind. I don't even need to ask you. I already know what you're gonna say. <laughs> you might have something. However. However, if our guest is going to participate, you probably should ask him first. That's true. He might actually have something more to say because he hasn't been on the podcast in months. Exactly. Exactly. So, and since he is again our guest, you should you should have him go first, um, honorary position. So, David, ask him. Why don't you ask him? Okay, uh, I, I do have something I want to talk about. It's not new with me, but uh, I want to talk about the Super Bowl. Okay. 
Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. All yeah. right, Robert. So this episode, what's new with you? Talk so, about the Super Bowl. So this episode is going to be coming out a week after the Super Bowl, but uh, for us talking about this, this that was last night. So it just happened last night. So it's very fresh yeah. on the brain. Yeah. Yeah. David, did you watch the whole thing? Yes. That. Uh, it was kind of a boring first quarter, but the, that ending was a. Uh, mm. It was. This it had, was uh, this, Yeah. Was this the longest Super Bowl ever? It had to be, because they played five quarters. I think so, because even like like because they because they changed the over they changed the overtime rules. Yeah. So with that being being in mind, I think the last time it went to overtime, the last time I remember was. Uh, when Tom Brady led the comeback, wasn't it that? Uh, uh, wasn't it Falcons, that? Wasn't it? Or yeah, was that say, wasn't it? Wasn't it the pa- that Patriots Falcons? I, I, I think that was the last overtime. I think that which, was the that, only other. That was the only other overtime Super Bowl. Yeah, which that one, you know, they got the ball and he went down the field for a touchdown, and you know that was the game. So yeah, this probably was the longest because yeah, like you said, it was it was five quarters. They played they, a they, full fifteen minutes. When the Chiefs scored that last touchdown, there were wasn't there like three seconds left on the clock? Got like yep. nine Overtime? seconds, yeah. Or nine seconds still. Yeah. So so yeah, was, they, was, they went through the yeah. whole the whole fifteen minutes of that overtime quarter. Now, I don't, I, and we can find out what y'all feel like. I wasn't happy with the outcome. I was not rooting for the Chiefs. I was rooting for the Forty ers but I was a little upset looking at posts after the game. And, and fans and 49er fans were all like, man, we suck. We're trash. Like, man, these this head coaching staff, like, they shouldn't have done this. And, oh, man, like, they don't know what the overtime rules are. And we suck and yada, yada. And I'm like, first off, you're in the Super Bowl, the biggest game in, in the NFL, right? You made it all this way. Second off, you lost by three points in o- overtime. Like, you're not a bad team. You did really well. It's just. The other team scored and you didn't, or scored a touchdown and you scored a field goal. It's like you made it that far in that game. Like, sure, there were mistakes in the game, but it's not like the other side didn't make their own mistakes. They just came out on top, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's but, like you're not a I mean, bad team. It, it's just one too many mistakes and you didn't win. I mean, you know, the Chiefs, the Chiefs won, but both at the end of the fourth quarter to. Take it to overtime, and at the end of that overtime, it was down to the wire. Like, <laughs> yeah, no. And the thing was like, too, and 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 y'all can feel free to disagree with this, and, and tell me what y'all think about this. But I mean, throughout the whole entire game, the 49ers had their way with, with the Chiefs for the most part. The defense was doing a lot better, which is why a bunch of the drives stalled out for the 49ers. But when it came, came down to the Chiefs' offense, like Patrick Mahomes, they took they took Travis Kelsey. Out out of the game, they took the run game out, and Holmes was, was not getting in his way with, with the offense. And that's why it took so long. Like, the defense got worn down, and then they started, you know, ramping up a little bit in the uh, in the third and fourth quarter. And they got themselves to the point where they can go in overtime against the 49ers. And, you know, then, then once again, 49ers stalled out, get field goal, and then Patrick Mahomes went down the field for a touchdown. But, like, for the most part, like, that, that especially in that first half, I really feel like while it was a very close game, the the 49ers by far looked like the better team. Mm. It's just, it doesn't matter who looks the best. It just matters who comes out on top and who comes out swinging in the, in the second half. If you keep it close, mm. you know, yeah, the, so, um, the 49ers are the more talented roster, but mm. the chiefs have Patrick Mahomes. I, I also, I also got a little upset when people were talking about why don't, you run the ball and it's like you know talking about the 49ers in the fourth in the fourth and then in, in the um in the in overtime it's like i mean you just saw i mean you have other running backs but like mccaffrick was ass like he had been running hard i mean you gotta understand this this is not a big dude over here even still even if he was a big dude he's running up against guys that are twice his size they usually run him up the middle and he runs hard, and he hits people, he drags people, and it's like, by the time you're playing in the fifth quarter of a game, it's kind of hard to, to, you know, keep going. And in all honesty, 
like, you know, Brock Purdy played an amazing game. Like, he played really well. Yeah, I, so, I'm, tired of, I'm tired of hearing people people say Brock Purdy's not good, and he's a it's, system and quarterback. The, and the thing is, is one, okay, even if you just want to say he's a game manager, or the argument with that, he is definitely a game manager. But even outside of that, uh, the dimes he was throwing, and yes, I'm going to say dimes, because he was putting the ball where only his receiver could get it. The only the only reason, like, there were a couple balls that were batted down. The only reason that the, the DB got their hands in there was because they were able to stretch out and get one hand in the way. But there was no way for, for the DBs to catch a bunch of the balls that he was, he was putting there. He was placing it right where his, his receiver could catch it, and only his receiver could catch it. And you don't do that if you're not a good quarterback. Like, the reason the Ravens lost to the Chiefs in the uh, NFC, AFC championship game was because Lamar Jackson tried to do way too much. The, the offense went away from what they had been doing all year. Lamar had to throw for 400 yards and three touchdowns. No, that's not what they had been doing all year. They needed to sit, uh, hit, hit the ball on the ground, start the run game, and then let Lamar do what Lamar does. And, you know, once you get the run game going, start passing the ball a little bit. But that should not be your main attack. Lamar tried to do way too much in that game. Brock Purdy in the Super Bowl, second year, had more composure than Lamar Jackson did in the AFC Championship game. Because he was sitting there, he was sitting in the pocket, he was taking hits, he was, you know, waiting out, he was, you know, maybe he was doing a drop-off, um, a check-down pass, or slants going around. He was going through his progressions. He looked really good. And it's like, there's no reason you should be going and saying this guy's just another system quarterback. Oh, we should have kept Jimmy G. It's like, no. This guy is your future. And you all just need to realize that he's a really good quarterback yes I mean, he's surrounded by a lot of help but i mean i mean like, like, mean like it's like rob it's like rob said like you know yes the 49ers as a whole is a more talented team but you can't you can't just take a talented team with a you know an all right quarterback and make it to the super bowl you you know exactly here's the exactly. here's the thing i'm worried about for uh the 49ers is was this their their window to win it because they have, yeah, like, I've seen that a lot. Purdy doesn't make a lot of money, but think just think about how loaded that team is. Mm-hmm. You know, you've got Brandon Ayuk and Debo Samuel and Christian McCaffrey and Trent Williams and George Kittle, and then on the defense you've got Nick Bosa and um, mm-hmm. I can't remember what's I the mean, um, the safety's name. Uh, but yeah, no, I get what you're saying with um, with like. And you think about it, uh, in a little while here, especially if Purdy keeps playing like he is, they're going to have to dish out more money for him if they want to keep him. And, yeah, they start getting I – mean, they. I mean, wasn't the 49ers the most tall pros for a team? Like, I mean, I don't remember how, they, how many they had, but they had the most. Because, like, all those guys you just listed went all pro. And so, you know – it will be a matter of if they can keep them together. I would love to see. I mean, I was really rooting for McCaffrey to get his, get his first ring. Uh, Cause he's such a great player. He deserves to get that. Brock Purdy's gotten so much slander. I was just like, man, if he could beat Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl, that'd be great. Also, I didn't want Patrick Mahomes to win. Um, but. I don't know. Now, talking about that, though, are we starting to see another, like, Tom Brady-esque dynasty out of the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes? I was about to bring the that o- up. The only thing about that is, is um, I don't know how many more years Andy Reid is going to coach. True. Mm-hmm. That's true. He is getting a little bit old. Because, uh... He's getting up there. Well, think about that. So, when... Okay. Tom Brady's rookie. When was Tom Brady's rookie year? Two thousand ninety nine or two thousand. Uh, I think it was two thousand one. Two thousand one. That that was their. That was his first Super Bowl though. Um, I'm looking well, up. was he a rookie in his first Super Bowl? It, no, he was. He wasn't a rookie in his first Super Bowl. But then it would have been two thousand. Okay. I'm pretty sure he was drafted in ninety nine. 
I'm pretty sure he sat two years before he actually got his start. I think he went, he went to his first Super Bowl in in his third year. Okay, so yeah, no, so he was yeah he was uh played at in New England from 2000 to 2019. Okay. Yeah. That being so, said, Mahomes Mahomes has done better earlier in his career than Brady has. Okay, but uh, that wise he has. Yeah. So one thing I do want to point out too is so Brady. So it was oh one. He won that he took the Patriots. Then oh three and oh four were his back to back. Mahomes had a two-year gap between his first Super Bowl and then, because that was 19. And then it was last year and this year. Yeah. So yeah, he he's won, our, he's won three out of four Super Bowls. Three out yeah. of four Super Bowls. And he's already got his, well, yeah, if you look, look at the first four years, or or what, how how long has Mahomes been at the Chiefs? He's been there... Uh, I think he was drafted in 2017 yeah. and sat out his rookie year. Okay, so so 19 was his first year starting. Maybe. Or was it 18? He might have had a year. Either way, he's already gone to four Super Bowls and won three of them. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the thing. There's no, there's no denying the talent behind it, but... Like people are comparing Patrick Mahomes' early career as of what he's done so far and Brady's early career. But Brady did more in the later half of his career than he did in the beginning of his career. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs has already have they've already got half the um record that the Patriots did with Tom Brady. Like the Super Bowl. No record. No, yeah. Okay, David, think about it this way. If you took Tom, I can't remember how long did he, he played 20, uh, 23 years, 24 years, whatever it was, something like he, that. He, this is the last first year he didn't play, then it would be probably 23, 23 years. 23, right. So if you split his career into like the first half and second half and, as, and pretend those are two different players, both are Hall of Fame careers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But his back half has four Super Bowls and his front half only has three. Yeah, so, I was about to say. I was about to say, what, but no, but saying. no, it was. I, I I was about to say because it's. I was about to say it's three and three, but no, it's six with the Patriots and the one, one with Tampa Bay. <laughs> so yeah, here's here's my thing with all this. So it's like, uh, Patrick Holmes is a great player. A hundred percent, I agree with that. Um, but you know, in the the goat conversation, whatever, yada yada, you know. I mean, Tom Brady is what people say is, is the GOAT because he's won so much. But it's not like, you know, I mean, you could you could put other metrics up there and he probably is, is not there for like other famous quarterbacks in, in the NFL era or whatever. But Mahomes lost to Tom Brady. So when people bring up that debate, that's all I'm going to say about that is that he lost to Brady. He lost, Brady to, a, he lost to an old Tom Brady. <laughs> exactly. So here's, yep. here's the thing, too. Here's the thing, too. Mahomes style, like, okay, Mahomes is not necessarily like the traditional, like, running quarterback, or whatever. I'm not saying he won't eventually develop into a uh, better, uh, just strictly like a passer style quarterback like Brady didn't really run much unless he absolutely had to you know and that's why he was able to to play for so long kind of like um uh, uh what can you name um retired from the Broncos what what's his name Manning Peyton Manning, Man, Peyton Manning. Yeah. you know he, he he played very similar to Tom Brady and that's you know so he he didn't he could play a lot older I don't know like Mahomes doesn't run a whole lot, and the refs tend to like him when it comes to like getting him banged up. So he doesn't usually get hit that much. But and obviously the game is moving towards protecting quarterbacks even more so. But it's like you know, how long is his career going to end up being? Like, is he going to have a career like Tom's? If so, 
I mean, he probably will win a bunch of rings because he's a good quarterback. You you said Robert something about him, uh, Andy Reid, you know, retiring, you know, because he's getting old, he might be retiring in a couple of years. And it's like, well, we'll find out if it's him or Mahomes or if it really doesn't matter which one's there, they still know how to win, you know. But it does not mean that I want to see him well, Also, there. Uh, think about – so the way the league is going, having so, – like toward mobile quarterbacks, they're not going mm-hmm. to have as long a career as the true pocket guys like Brady. Yeah. So yeah. he might not be able to play – he might not play long enough to win – Six or seven Super Bowls. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm getting. At. It's like you know, it, uh, there was an interview. Um, the who was it? Was it Pat McAfee? I think is the guy I'm thinking of with uh, Tom Brady. And uh, Tom was on there, and he was like, "Yeah, you know, it's 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 great great to see uh, Mahomes and the success success that he's having, and all that stuff." And he's like, "I'm I'm happy for anyone who can make the most out of their career." But the the funny thing was, like, the line that he kept saying was, like, if anyone can win seven Super Bowls, you know, it's like props to him. And it's like he's kind of sitting there. It's like, you know, hey, when Mahomes wins seven Super Bowls, then you can come talk to him about him being on the same level as me over here. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the thing, too. Like, I'll even give it to you that Mahomes might be the best or probably is the best quarterback in the, in the league right now. Oh, yeah. But... But yeah, when you compare him to these Hall of Famers like uh, Brady or or even like uh, Drew Brees, Peyton Manning, Joe Montana, mm-hmm. like you know, it, he has more Super Bowls than Manning and Brees. True. That's true. And he has the anyway. same, and he's the same as Mon- uh, Montana. Manning won two. Peyton or Eli? Both. Both won two. Okay. They both won two. Eli won both knew. for the Giants, and Peyton won one for the Colts and one for the uh, Broncos. Oh, I remember the one for the Broncos. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. I was, I was, yeah. I remember that one very well. Uh, oh, yeah. For anyone who doesn't know, we're all depressed Panthers fans on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, with all the changes they're getting, they're trying to get the hype back now. Will I fall uh, for the hype? I don't keep up with it enough to fall for the hype. But I would love to see the Panthers do well this year. Do you, uh, do you know who they hired as the for head coach? I don't. I don't remember his name. I just know he was the Buccaneers OC. Okay, so well, I, I was. I haven't seen it in a while. I saw who, the, and I don't remember the names, but I saw who they hired for the GM and the. Um, I hired another guy, but the GM was one guy that I remember I saw that they they were hiring. Um, but I don't remember who the uh, coach was. I I don't remember seeing that. No. Can we hire a new owner? Years. Oh, I would love to hire a new owner. <laughs> that's 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 the reason. So here's the thing. And uh, anyone that's, who's that's not the a problem. Fan, anyone who's not a Panthers fan, let's just break this down for you. Uh, well, let's see. Last year, we, they fired the head coach halfway through the season. First year head coach. Um, first time head coach, first time as a Panthers head coach. Halfway through the season, they fired him. The year before, what we have was he was he a two year or was he a year and a half? They kept the coach around. Uh, who are you talking about? Oh no no no, because we've only uh, had Rule, one. Since, Rule got, uh, last year. Rule got fired early in the season, and Steve Wilkes. Uh, he was finished the season. He was. Yeah, so we had Rule for two or three years. Two and a half. Two and a half. He got okay. fired in his and, third season. And then we had the last guy for basically a year because he got fired throughout the half, uh, throughout the midway of the season. Yeah. Um, okay, so the Panthers' head coach is Dave Canals. Dave Canals. Okay. Uh, anyways, the the guy who owns it, um, David Tepper. David Tepper is a soccer guy. He's playing the wrong kind of football. Doesn't really know much about it, but apparently has his hands really, really deep in the team and wants to do things. Part of reason why he's probably fired the GM and now got a new one. I just hope that the GM that they currently have is allowed to do his job. Like, as an owner, stay out of the way of the people you hire and just make the money off of them. Like, that's what the... You're an old witch, rich dude. Like, why do you have to meddle? 
Also, he hasn't, like, they haven't even kept the, like, coaching staff around long enough for them to actually exactly. make a difference. <laughs> exactly. If if this coaching staff gets fired somewhere between next year and the year after, I, I'm going to be done as a Panthers fan until Tepper uh, sells the team. Yeah. Ta- Taylor is, uh, is a, a Ravens fan, so I'm I'm slowly moving over to them just to be on with her because uh, they actually have an organization that knows how to run itself. Sure. Lamar chokes in, in uh clutch moments, but I mean, they at least make the playoffs. They know how to win a game. Yeah. Yes. I know the Panthers won this year, but it was, it was, it was, it was sad. <laughs> won two now, games. That, so you, you can't, that so you can't said, call that winning. <laughs> well, we didn't go, uh, Oh, and 16. Um, that being said, might as well have. You can't go zero and sixteen anymore. Seventeen games. Oh yeah. Yes, yeah, so if you go zero and sixteen, you you did really bad. I think Wesley's frozen. Uh, you were frozen oh, for a second. So I figured I froze. Okay, so am I back? Yeah, you're back. Okay, so go go. Okay, I I I, I asked who uh, what y'all think of Bryce Young, and then nothing happened. So uh, yeah, we didn't hear heard that. that. Okay, what did y'all think of Bryce Young? Uh, he probably would have been better if they hadn't traded uh, DJ Moore. Mm. Like who? Yeah. Uh, who was the Panthers' number one receiver? Adam Thielen. I didn't realize that they had uh, they gotten him. Wasn't he on the Vikings not too long ago? Yeah. I think I had him in fantasy one year, and I was like, oh, yeah, he's not too bad. And then I saw him with a Panthers jersey, and I was like, wait, what are you doing here? But <laughs> I don't keep up with trades, I, I don't, and I don't keep up with the Panthers because it's just too depressing. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, like, I, I really hate – and I'm not saying he's the greatest thing since sliced cheese, but I really hate all the slander that, that Bryce Young gets when it comes to like his first year, because there is nobody, absolutely nobody on the Panthers roster for him to throw to or block for him. Like I watched a little bit of his game. Okay, sure. He's not always making the best decision. He's a rookie. What do you expect? But like he, he's still doing the best he can within the offense that he is in. Like, it's a trash offense. Don't blame everything on him, you know? Yeah. I mean, sure. Like, okay, we were talking about the Super Bowl not too long ago. Uh, in an interview after the Super Bowl, Purdy said, hey, I should have done better. And I should have gotten my team to the, to a position where we could have won the game. Where it, when he really did everything he could and they just ended up losing to a better team. But, you know. Patrick Holmes on the other sideline, it's hard to beat him. Um, but it's like, you know, as a quarterback, you might need to take a lot of the responsibility and you're going to have a lot of the weight on your shoulders. But in all reality, as a fan, you're hating on this guy who may be really good, but there's no weapons, no, no help, no, I mean, he can't keep a coach, they can't keep coaching staff around him. I mean, you know. I don't think oh, CJ Stroud ha- would have done that much better if he was the Panthers. That's what I was about to ask you about. Do you think? Do you think they drafted the wrong quarterback? Because from what I heard, um, Frank Reich and Josh McCown wanted CJ Stroud, and Tepper yeah. intervened and said that they had to take Bryce Young. Yeah, I heard that. Um, no, here's the thing. I think. I mean, you even listened to. I don't know if you saw. If there's an interview that. Um, um, it might have been during Pro Bowl week or whatever, but um, C.J. Stroud had an interview and he was asked about Bryce Young and like what he thought about him, and he was like, you know, hey, it's like, I was just put in a better position. It's like Bryce Young's a good player; he's gonna bounce back eventually. He's gonna show the kind of player that he is. It's like, you know, I was just put in a position better than he was. You know, it's like, and yeah, you can look at like the Texans; they weren't great, great before, but they had a couple pieces here and there. You know, so. Now, obviously, that's coming from a guy who's 
very humble and and is is not going to like lump on all this praise and talk down about other other guys that he knows or plays with or against. But um, still, I, I I agree with what he said. Like I, I, Bryce was just put in a horrible position, and I think that there were just a few missing pieces on the Texans, and that's why they were able to do, do as well as they did this year. The Panthers are not a few missing pieces away from from a playoff run. We are a complete overhaul away from a from a playoff run. I just think that they need to stick with Bryce Young and get weapons around him, build a line around him. And if he gets that, I think he'll be a good quarterback. I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I mean, I understand that like college is completely different from the NFL. And just because you played at Alabama doesn't mean you're not going to be a bust in the uh, NFL. But you don't go to Alabama if you aren't good or aren't can't play football, you know. And even him at Alabama, he did yeah, he played Alabama. Even him at Alabama, like he played well. It wasn't strictly just because he had better receivers in the corners, you know. So I think he'll do well eventually. He may not do well as long as he's uh wearing a Panthers jersey. Yeah. So we'll see. I, I hope, see, he, I he's, hope. A guy, he's a guy who would benefit a lot to being in Kyle, Kyle Shanahan's 49er offense. Yeah. Oh, don't bring Purdy to the forty uh, to the Panthers. He's too good for that. I no, mean, I'm just, he, I'm a, I, I know, but I, I'm, I'm saying, trying uh, to make a point about how how they like. Well, the the Forty Nine er offense is kind of like quarterback proof. Like any like yeah. anybody can play in that offense. But I mean, yeah, like Georgia the Panthers. Yeah. The Panthers don't. Uh, yeah, they're not giving him any help. You're, yeah. you're, t- you're asking a a rookie to just do, you know, to s- like act the, like a five year like veteran. The, it's like the Trevor you, Lawrence. You, Trevor Lawrence came and was playing with the Jags on a trash team with no help, and they expected a rookie to be the saving grace for them. And it's like you can't expect that out of a rookie. Trevor Lawrence has looked fine in his preceding years since being drafted in his rookie year. I'm sure Bryce Young will do the same. Yeah. But you can't have a – yes, a quarterback can make a difference on, on a team. Look at Tampa Bay when they got Brady. But, yeah, you can't just take a rookie who was good in college and expect him yeah. to be Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even Tom Brady wasn't Tom Brady until a couple years in the league. You know? Yeah. Tom also I mean, wasn't good in college. Yeah, I mean, he, did, did he start? I mean, I guess he would have had to start if he got. Drafted. I think he started one year at Michigan. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, he he came out, didn't start, you know, his rookie year and this and that, and it's just like, and then he became what he became. Like he got his opportunity and he made the most of it, and you know, now he's in the conversation. He, 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 A lot of people consider him the goat. So you know, he he is the I, goat. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't even think uh, you, I don't think you can argue against that. I mean, you, you can say you don't like him, but I don't think you can argue against the fact that he is the goat. Yeah. See, and the thing is, is like, so nowadays the new face of the league since Tom is gone is uh, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I don't like either one of them, uh, and it's not necessarily. Well, in my for me, it comes down to I just don't like their personalities, and and the way that they uh, show themselves. I was really, really rooting against them. Like re- previous years, I didn't really care that much. If they won, it was what it was. But this year, I was really rooting against them because of the way that they were acting at the beginning of the year when they were losing. And I mean, honestly, you even saw it in the Super Bowl. I mean, the push that Kelsey had to um uh, Andy Reid, and um like. You know, just the way that they were essentially throwing tantrums because they weren't doing well. And it's like, you know, I Tom Brady, like, sure, everyone got really, really annoyed with him when he was winning a bunch. But one, you didn't see him on every other commercial. And two, he composed himself really well on and off the field. You know, he was a competitor, but he composed himself really well on and off the field. 
and I think was a good enough role model for for kids who were looking up to him. I look at well, Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, and I look at them, and I'm like, I don't want my kids modeling after them because they're going to be over here pouting when they lose. And it's like that's and not. See, and see, here's here's the thing too. Like with that, you know, yes, it's their job to play football, yeah. and they're you know they're supposed to do a good job and want to win, but at the same time, mm-hmm. it's just a game. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's their job though. So be professional. About out it yeah you know yeah like that's the thing is like you could never deny about tom brady like him or not he was very professional when it came to what he did you know and i just don't necessarily see that like and it's not like i don't see that out of nfl players so it's not like it's one of those things where me being younger than half of the nfl leagues uh they're just young kids nowadays you know uh don't know how to act it's not it's not necessarily me saying that because I still see it. I mean, I don't know if y'all saw it, but um, uh, speaking of CJ Stroud, uh, at the rookie banquet the NFL had, uh, apparently he stayed behind and helped clean up with the uh, waiters because he he looked at the room and thought that it was uh, basically that they left it too messy for for the waiters to have to clean up. So he stayed behind and helped clean it up. I'm like, that's that's a good young man right there, someone who was raised right and doesn't think that he's better than other people because he makes all this money and plays football for a living. You know, just because he's known by millions of people. It's like, he 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 had the reality check. And like, I feel like a lot of times, players like, you know, in the way that Travis Kelsey and um, Patrick Holmes a lot of time act, and hey, it might just be a persona. A persona. It, it may not be actually how they are. Like, it could just be the act they're putting on. But I don't like it, you know. And it doesn't look good a lot of the times for them, especially with a bunch of kids looking up to them. Yeah. But they won the Super Bowl, yada, yada, yada. Football is going to be over for the next couple of months. But, hey, I'm looking forward to college coming back. It'll be a while, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah, I gotta uh, cancel my Hulu live TV until September. <laughs> yeah, because I, I don't care about basketball, or March Madness, or or uh, Major League Baseball. So I might care about basketball this this year. Now y'all don't, so it doesn't really matter what I'm uh, say. But South Carolina is doing pretty good. Their men's team is doing pretty good. Their women's team always does good, but their men's this team is like 21 and three right now. And uh, so they're doing pretty good. They're number they, last I checked, they're number two in the SEC behind Alabama, which they lost to Alabama. And I think Alabama maybe won one or two more, had had one or two more conference wins at that point in time. But they'd beaten everyone else in the SEC besides Georgia. And then they lost to y'all, lost to Clemson. I was so pissed watching that game. Once again, losing. I wouldn't know. I would. <laughs> I, I was yeah. about to say, I, I don't. I don't. Even, I don't even think I could tell you like, what, you know, what Clemson's record is in basketball right now, or who we oh, even y'all played. Doing, y'all aren't doing that. Oh, I can't. Now, we are sixteen that's... and seven. Yeah, y'all. Y'all play a pretty decent schedule though, so that's why y'all are are like that. But I mean, you know, well, we played a beat... basketball conference. Yeah, well, y'all also, uh, y'all beat North Carolina, um, I think I saw. Lost to Duke. Oh, yeah, I did see that, yeah. So, y'all are y'all are a good team. Um, like, South Carolina is a good team, and they just played a better team in Clemson, and y'all's shots were falling when ours weren't, and that's just how basketball goes. If you're not, your shots aren't falling, you're not going to end up winning the game. Um, and some teams just don't have the problem of, of you know, their shots falling. But yeah, y'all played a, a pretty decent schedule. Um, so you know, sixteen and seven is not horrible. I don't think y'all are ranked though right now, are they? If you uh, have it pulled up, I don't think so because we're seventh in the ACC. Okay, yeah. Or well, yeah. yeah. Like like you said, you play in a basketball conference, so. You, you got you got a lot of people on your schedule that are 
that are usually going to be ranked really high, which is going to make your record a lot lower and make you lower in the ACC. And well, that's also another thing too. Like most of the time, people think like when if they think of Clemson and sports, they think of football, <laughs> and not 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 saying our basketball team's bad, but you know it's not we, we're. The first thing. Yeah, you're not focused on the basketball team as much as you are. Same, same, the same thing with ba- same thing with baseball. Mm-hmm. I, I know yeah. in the past we've I don't know in the past we've done decent, but it's just not you know we're we're more of a uh, football school. Yeah, I say South Carolina thinks more. No, we're not even their baseball, but they haven't been doing great the past couple of years. Mm-hmm. And so, so, uh, Clemson isn't even, isn't even really a football school. <laughs> not not like the SEC schools are, but uh. No, no. Well, y'all in the ACC, but you know, y'all have had a a real good. I mean, with Sweet uh, Dabble coming around, um, you know, y'all have had but, a bunch of success with him. It, but it's, outside it's, of that, y'all aren't. Yeah, y'all aren't like a blue blood yeah, or anything like that. I, I was I was about to say it's it's pretty much just been since uh, Dabo. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, like, like you know, you think of like football schools, you think of like. Georgia and Bama, who've been in it forever, <laughs> mm. who've been good forever. For schools you like um, uh, well, a bunch of the like ones that have were really good, like you know, like like the blue bloods, Miami, like, yeah, Tennessee. Like, they're not good anymore, you know, as good mm-hmm. as they used to be. Is uh, Florida State they have blue blood? Um, I think. I think their run was in the 90s, kind of like the way that the Clemson's was in the 2010s. Okay. I don't know before that if they were really like yeah. a national power. I was going to say, like, you know, like Miami hasn't really done much of anything, but uh, I know like Florida State's one of those schools that like has a decent tr- uh, history with, with football, but, you know, they're a little hit or miss right now. Like they might have a good season. They might not. It's like kind of up in the air, you know, with like how they've been doing. Um, no. But like, yeah, there's a lot of the old old blue bloods just aren't what they used to be. So, who's changed? Mm-hmm. So hopefully, one day South Carolina will actually be good. Uh, one can dream in my lifetime, maybe. No, right. well, we're all coming up here on an hour and forty five minutes, and. uh I figured we probably already bored everyone out talking about football, so we should probably yeah, go ahead. We're gonna bring in, we're gonna bring in all these Star Wars nerds on this, and then they're gonna be like, "What's this football?" <laughs> yeah. If if you yeah. haven't listened to any, if you haven't listened to anything, you else, guys have talked about out, football before. <laughs> yeah, we this have, isn't the first but, time yeah. you talked about football. <laughs> but I was about to say, if you have if you haven't listened to us before, we are fans of a lot of stuff. We're, we're nerds of a lot of things, yes. Star Wars is just the one thing that we can really nerd out on, but we're, we're yeah. Robert has mentioned this, and I think eventually down the road we need to change it. But we got, we I don't know, Trailcast is a good name, but I don't know if it really fits what we do. We need to come up with yeah, something we're... that engulfs all of our, all of our uh, nerdums. Yeah. But for now, you can find us we'll, on. We'll the work on that later. Yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 so, we'll, we'll work out that later. Okay, so since Robert did the intro, is he going to do the outro too? Yeah, Rob, do the outro. Right now. Yeah. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode. If you did, please leave a like and let us know what you thought in the comments down below. Or you can send us a DM at Down the Rabbit Trail YT on Instagram. Be sure and join us next week on The Trailcast. You know, that was good, but it wasn't as professional as the first time. I'm tired. I'll give him I'll give him an A for effort. First one was an A plus though. Yeah. Just just a little little bit less. Alright, that's it. Goodbye. <laughs>